So this here is the Snapmaker U1. And this guy right here, Bamboo Labs H2C. What's up everyone, I am Aaron and welcome back to the Printosaurus. Today we are talking about the Bamboo Labs H2C and our Snapmaker U1. We're gonna put them head to head. Which printer do you think printed this? I think you'd be surprised by the results, or maybe you won't be. We won't spoil anything. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'll tell you all about what we're doing here today. Oh look, I've got two of these guys now. Which one came from which printer? We're gonna talk about these, I promise, but before we do that, we need to talk about what we're gonna do in today's video. So what I aim to do with today's video is there has been a lot of talk between the U1 and the H2C. I've done videos on both printers individually. So today we're gonna bring them head to head because that seems to be what everybody really wants to know is which one is really better? And that's gonna be a hard thing to answer because these printers really aren't in the same class. Let's talk about specs on both of these printers, starting with the Snapmaker U1. So your total build volume is 270 by 270 by 270. You have four tool heads, which means it supports up to four colors or four different materials. It is best suited for PLA, TPU, and PETG. And if you opt for the additional top hat enclosure, uh, then you can kind of expand into ABS and ASA, or you can jump on printables and there's a couple of DIY solutions now. Does not come equipped with a hardened nozzle, so that would be something else that you would have to upgrade to if you wanted to use some of your glass fiber filaments or your carbon fiber filaments. Anything abrasive you want a hardened nozzle for. And that more or less covers the basic specs. You've got five second tool swaps or tool changes. Um, you have a bed that heats up to 100 degrees Celsius and nozzle temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius. Moving on to the H2C, it comes with hardened nozzles off the gate out of the box. It also has a heated chamber, so chamber temperature up to 65 degrees Celsius. The nozzle temperature goes up to 350 degrees Celsius and your bed temp goes up to 100 and 20 degrees Celsius. So much better suited for those engineering grade filaments. Build volume there, if you're using both nozzles, is 300 by 320 by 325. And with the Vortex system, you can run up to seven total hot ends. So we got our specs out of the way and you have a good idea of what each printer offers. So now let's get into our projects and I really wanted to level the playing field here. I wanted to pick materials that both of these printers should be able to work with without any problems and then put them head to head in that testing. So I jumped on Maker World, scrolled around and then finally found that Venom bus that I teased earlier. I thought that is an excellent project to do. I have filament here. I have PLA as my main filament type. These are multi-material printers. That's what they're advertised to do. So with that said, we're going to introduce some PETG as well. So if you didn't know, PLA and PETG do not stick together. They work fabulously as support material for one another. So I loaded these up, same filaments in both printers, identical, same color, same everything. And I let the slicers do their job. And let's talk about our slice times. So for the Snapmaker U1, the estimated completion time was one day, 13 hours, 42 minutes. With that said, let's talk about when the model actually completed. 42 hours, 34 minutes. So there is uh, a gap in estimation and actual completed time. It's about four to five hours is what I'm finding. I believe Snapmaker is working on refining that so it's more accurate. So more to come with that as updates continue to roll out. Now for the H2C, it was going to be one day, 23 hours, 40 minutes, and it finished spot on with that time. So Snapmaker U1 was faster and it was faster by about 10 hours. Not too bad so far. So we got everything loaded, talked about estimates. Now let's get into actually printing. We hit the print, we sat back and we watched, we let these go head to head until they were complete. And then we pulled them off the printer to see how each one turned out. And I have some surprises there. So let's talk about that Snapmaker U1 and what I was greeted with. And this is what we ended up with. And I let it continue printing because I wanted to see if it would still print um, without a, you know, a total loss of our project. So we'll get this thing off of the field plate. So we've got a lot of stringing. Obviously, this is all residue um, from that purge tower not being able to actually purge that filament. So that's what we are working with. 
So you can see here with the multi-material handling how well PETG and PLA work together to support one another. These supports break off so clean. Really, really impressed with how well PETG works as a support material for PLA. So here is our Snapmaker Venom Bust. So not too bad overall. We were able to recover. We were able to save this model, which is fantastic because it is a long print. And who wants to come back to that big of a mess when your perch tower fails? and uh, you know you can't actually use your model. All things considering, this thing turned out fantastic. So there really weren't any surprises with the H2C. Overall, it printed really well. I didn't have any perch tower issues. Uh, the algorithm, everything took care of everything. Bamboo Studio, it sliced. It was accurate in its slicing time. You know, it's pretty much in line with what you would expect nowadays from a bamboo printer. They just work out of the box really well. So uh, no surprises. All right, so this guy here, this is my other Venom bust and it turned out great as well. This one, uh, no issues with any of the print settings. Everything turned out great with the H2C. Drop down in the comments below, left or right, which one do you think came off which printer? Looking at these up close, it is remarkable how similar they are in quality. There is really not much difference. If I have to nitpick, um, this one here is off of the Snapmaker, the U1. It just had some slight problems with some of the overhangs and cooling. So that's more settings that we can adjust and probably get a better result. But overall, it's not something and it's not in a place where it's going to be super noticeable. So if you're hanging this up on the wall, quality wise, these things are spot on, which is fantastic. Uh, what I did next was I found a print that was another multi-material print. This one is PLA and TPU, and it is uh, a little different from kind of that print in place type print or, uh, you know, it didn't print the same material at the same time. And let me explain. So this handle here is printed in PLA and then the end pieces here of the actual hammer is TPU. So I picked this because I wanted to see dimensional accuracy, how each printer would print each material and if they would slide over one another without any issues and be accurate and then continue to print. So what you do is you print your handle first in PLA. So you could print this in PETG as well, uh, but you print your handle and then you print the TPU portions and it has a pause in it. And then when it pauses, you take your handle and you slide over it and then you continue your print. I am extremely impressed with how both of these printers printed TPU. It is probably the best experience I've had so far with TPU, no stringing, uh, nothing. It just worked really well. Now this is a little bit harder TPU, which is a little bit more forgiving. This is 95A. Um, I'll have to look at what the manufacturer is. I'll drop that down below. Really impressed with the results. So let's talk about how each printer handled that material. Snapmaker U1, we'll start with that one again. Extremely easy. Very, very user-friendly process. You just put the spool on, let it load through the automatic feeder, go to the tool head, set your filament type, and you are good to go. Very simple. The H2C, on the other hand, a little more involved. So there's a separate port on the back of the printer that you want, they want you to use for TPU. So you have to disconnect your PTFE tube um, from the buffer, the filament buffer in the back, run it through that hole. And then if you look at their instructions online, their wiki page, they want you to use like a top mounted thing for most of your filaments more so for the softer stuff, but they want you to use something like that and direct feed it even, they recommend that. Um, so what I did was I used the external mount and I did route it through that port in the back that's labeled for TPU, but it's a lot of extra steps, not as easy as kind of a drop and go situation with U1, so something to pay attention to. It worked, it worked extremely well on the HTC, but that's just one extra step that if you wanna print and you're like, oh, okay, now I have to do this and, and get this right now for the H2C, they only want you printing TPU on that right nozzle. So they don't want you using the left nozzle. So now we're limited to what we can do because now we're using that external spool holder. So you're really not using multiple filament types at this point, unless you use the left nozzle for another filament. So you can use two different types, whereas the U1 can still use the other three tool heads without any problems. So that's just something to keep in mind and something I found along the way with testing. So I feel like that is a big win for the U1 in terms of TPU handling. 
So let's look up close at the results of our prints. So let's look at the time lapses. We'll put them head to head and then we will talk close ups. As I mentioned, excellent results. I'm really, really impressed again with how well TPU worked on both of these printers. Once you got them set up, I talked about the quirks with the H2C and getting it set up, but overall still a good experience. Same with the U1, very impressed with how easy it was to work with. All right, so it is time to crown our winner. Which one of these would you guys pick? Drop your comments down below, let me know. Can you guess which printer each one came off of? I don't know if you can. These things are so close, it is ridiculous. But in the spirit of crowning a winner for today, this one here, and I have to look on the back to make sure I have the right one. So this one here came off the Snapmaker U1, and this one here is our H2C. I'm going to pick the H2C as the winner for the Venom Bust, and the reason why is because we had the issues with the Purge Tower again. I know those are things that you can tune out of your slicer, so it's not a huge deal overall. The quality and everything's the same, but this was a head-to-head -head test, and they are that close that I have to pick something like that to declare a winner. That is fantastic. I feel like that these two printers would be that spot on with one another, but in terms of overall quality, they really are. So H2C wins by maybe a technicality. I'm gonna be that guy. What? Sometimes that happens, but this was a head-to-head -head test. Let's move on to our hammers. So this was the TPU and the PLA test. For this, if these were identical colors and I dropped these on the ground and picked them up, I could not tell you which printer they came off of. So in terms of quality and printing, this one is a complete wash it is a draw now where i am going to declare a winner is ease of use that hands down goes to the u1 it handled tpu significantly easier than what you have to do with the h2c for the h2c you have to unplug your ptfe tube or route a new ptfe tube there's a port in the back for tpu and you can run it to that external spool holder or you can print what's recommended on the wiki for the overhead direct drive kind of setup it's not bad, but it's not quick. And the U1 makes that way easier. So the U1 wins our TPU test, and the U1 as a whole was the faster printer. So let's talk about, we're gonna call this whole thing a draw. Outside of that, let's talk about which printer might be better for you. And that's really gonna be the true winner today. Where the H2C is really going to step above and go beyond and why it earns that $2,400 price tag is, if you want anything over four colors, H2C has it up to 24 colors, I believe. Tons of options. If you need engineering grade filaments, the H2C is gonna be your printer. It's got a heated chamber. It's got hard nozzles off the bat. You don't have to buy them or upgrade to them. Um, it is better equipped for engineering filament types. You're just ready to go. Build volume. If you print larger than 270 by 270 by 270, which is the U1 build size, um, you're going to want the H2C as well. That should give you a couple of areas to look at to figure out if that makes the H2C the printer that you would need. If you can live with four colors or four materials, if you want something fast, if you are okay with that 270, 270, 270 build volume, the U1 is a fantastic printer. If you only want to spend $1,000, the U1 is a phenomenal printer. It is fast, it is efficient, it is really good. Uh, as far as my testing went overall, I didn't have any issues with either printers. I know uh, looking online, a couple of people have had or experienced issues with the U1 and the tool heads not registering, things like that. I haven't experienced that yet. So far, it's been smooth sailing there. I did have that connectivity issue, which the latest firmware seems to have resolved. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. And that's kind of the only bugginess that I've had so far with the U1. H2C has been fine. No issues, no complaints. That's what I got for you guys today. Drop comments, links down below. Let me know which one you guys settled on if you like this video. I really appreciate you guys. I cannot do this without you. So I will see you guys in the next video. I'm looking forward to it.